Hello friends, this video on heredity and evolution part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now there are certain mechanisms of evolution. There are certain factors which drive evolution, which make evolution happen. So let us quickly talk about them. The first is mutation. What is mutation? Mutation is nothing but change in DNA sequence. As I said before also, that inside the cell we have the nucleus, inside nucleus we have chromosomes, inside chromosomes we have genes and genes are nothing but the DNA. So DNA consists of the sequence of nucleotides. Now if there is a change in the nucleotide sequence in DNA, that means there is some error in the DNA copy. So that gives rise to variation. That is the scenario when the offspring have some new traits which were not present in the parents. So evolution of a single, let me give you examples from, let me give you instances which show mutation from the examples which I discussed just now. The evolution of the single green or blue beetle which later gave rise to more beetles. So that is an example of mutation, like the first green beetle which was seen, why was it seen? It was because of variation. Why did variation happen? Maybe there was some alteration in the DNA sequence. So it was a result of mutation. The next mechanism is natural selection. Natural selection, it is very, very important. I mean, discussion on evolution will remain incomplete if we do not talk about natural selection. What is it? It is the change in frequency of some genes in a population which give survival advantage. This is very, very important. Natural selection, that means nature selects something. So nature selects something for its good. For example, the beetles, the evolution of the green beetles, the green beetles, the green color of the beetles was a survival advantage for the beetles because if they were green in color, crows will not be able to eat them. So nature was also supporting that green color of the beetles. So nature selected green color of the beetles. Therefore, the green number of green beetles kept on increasing. Right. So that was natural select, natural selection. That is nature selection. Similarly, the evolution of finches with larger beaks. When I was talking about the Darwin finches, you saw that when the population of the finches increased so much, there was competition for food between the finches. So then what happened that finches with larger beak started eating something which the other finches could not eat. So having a larger beak became a survival advantage for the finches. So nature selected the larger beak because nature wanted to support something which will help in the survival of the organism. So nature supported the larger beak and that is why more and more finches were produced with larger beaks. So that is known as natural selection. That means nature also makes its own selection depending upon the survival advantage of the organism. Third is genetic drift. What is genetic drift? It is again change in frequency of some lucky genes in a population even though they do, these do not have any survival advantage. Now, something happens, something can be anything. It can be some accidental event which happens because of which some lucky genes suddenly increase in number in a population. The best example is the evolution of the blue beetles. So you would have seen that green beetles and blue beetles both were existing together. So there was no advantage of being blue in color. In fact, there was survival advantage of being green in color. But suddenly one day one animal came and he uh, stamped on all the green beetles and they all died. So the number of blue beetles increased. So even though the blue color in the beetles was give, not giving any survival advantage, but just they were lucky that they were not stamped by the animal. So since they were lucky, so they existed and their number increased in the population. So that is known as genetic drift. And the last one that is migration. We all know what is migration. It is movement of organisms from one place to another. You would have often heard people that people are shifting, people have migrated from some remote area to our place. You would have heard such statements, right? So migration is movement of organisms in a group from one place to another. So if you look at examples of migration, let us take the same example of beetles. Suppose there is an area which is inhabited by red beetles. Now let us suppose there is one 
orange beetle, this beetle in orange color, which comes from somewhere and enters the territory of these beetles. What happens? Gradually, this will also reproduce and the number of orange beetles will increase in the same area. Right? So sometimes because of migration also, there are evolution of new organisms. Right? So this one organism came and due to reproduction, more and more organisms of similar kinds were formed. So these are some of the mechanisms which drive the phenomenon of evolution. So now that we know what is evolution, I think it is good to talk about acquired and inherited traits because this is something very important. As long as we were talking about heredity, we were only talking about traits which are being passed to us from our ancestors. So those kind of traits are the inherited traits. That means the traits which we get from our previous generations. But what are the acquired traits? Are there some traits which we gain not from our ancestors but from something else? So let us have a look. When I talk about acquired traits, these are the traits acquired by organisms during their lifetime, right? So the traits which do not come with our genes, they have not come from our ancestors. The traits are something which we have gained for ourselves while we are alive. So we try to get those traits. They are known as acquired traits. Let us take some examples. Now, when I talk about acquired traits, I am talking about things like this. For example, the hair color. These days sometimes we feel that, okay, I got black hair. So maybe black hair is my inherited trait. But I don't like black hair. I want my hair to be brown. So what do I do? I go and get my hair colored as brown. So now I have brown hair. But is that an inherited trait? That is not an inherited trait. That is an acquired trait. I acquired that brown color of my hair during my lifetime, right? Similarly, so here you can see the hair color of this lady is changing because she is actually making it change. So this is an acquired trait. Similarly, we can think of getting your skin tanned or let us suppose if you have a group of mice and if you cut their tail, so do you think that when the mice will reproduce further, the new organisms which are formed will be without tails? No, because the tail of the mice was cut. So the without tail, the mouse exists. That is an, an acquired trait, right? Similarly, the tanning of the skin. Sometimes we go out too much in sun, so our skin gets tanned. So the skin complexion changes. So that is also an example of acquired trait. Whereas when I talk of inherited traits, these are the traits controlled by genes. These are passed on from one generation to the next. So these kind of traits pass from parents to the offspring. So these are the traits which we were talking about while we were talking about heredity. For example, the eye color, the hair color, right? So let us look at some examples of acquired and inherited traits. Now, when we talk about inherited traits, the, they are controlled by the genes in the germ cells. Germ cells, that is the sex cells, right? But when we talk about acquired traits, they have nothing to do with the genes. Let us look at some examples. For example, the muscles of a weightlifter. How do, does he get that muscles? Is that an inherited trait? No. He does a lot of exercise and because of which he gets those kind of muscles. So it is an acquired trait. Similarly, the scars on the face. For example, this lady has got scars on her faces. So what is this? Was she born with these scars? No. She got them maybe because she used some makeup material which was not good for her skin or maybe she had got some allergies or there can be many reasons. So that is also an acquired trait. Hair length. Any day I feel like I just go to the parlor and get my hair cut. So when I get my hair cut, the length of my hair is again an acquired trait. I was not born with it, right? While on the other hand, when we talk about inherited traits, we can think of the shape of the earlobe. 
the attached ear lobe and the free ear lobe we are born with it we do not change it or we do not acquire it during our lifetime this is how we are born this is what we carry from our previous generation or the color of the eye we cannot change the color of the eye even though now we have those external lenses with the help of which we can change them but the natural color of the eye is something which is inherited the shape of the foot as i said different people have different foot shape and structure which they inherit from their parents hair color so that is also something which we inherit from our parents and talking about the natural hair color now if during our lifetime we get our hair colored artificially then that again becomes an acquired trait but otherwise hair color which the color of the hair with which we are born that is an inherited trait thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again